Welcome to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. It's good to be able to worship together on this Sunday morning. Uh, let's begin with prayer. O oh God, Creator and Redeemer, reveal yourself and your will. We come united in worship as your people. We come dependent upon your grace, which gives us so much more of your love than we deserve. We come dependent upon your mercy, which withholds the just judgment we do deserve. We come dependent upon your forgiveness, which removes our guilt and remembers our sin no more. We come desiring to know you better and to take on your likeness in all our relationships and responsibilities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault. When the two of you are alone, if the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our forgiveness. Amen. <clears throat> my favorite place is the ocean. Uh, whether I am there with Kelly sitting on the beach while she reads a book and, and I just watch the ocean or if I am studying the ocean in school, that's my favorite subject. The ocean is one of the most beautiful of all God's creations. If you sit at the shoreline, you can never see where the ocean ends. You can never see an end. There is a lot to be learned from sitting and just watching the ocean. If you are present at high tide, the waves come crashing in upon the shoreline. There is a, a greatly exacerbated uh, in the midst of uh, torrential storms like hurricanes, uh, big waves that come crashing in as, as walls of water come crashing toward the land. At high tide, the ocean seems to command your attention, invites you to a conversation. It's loud. It roars. Resistance to its natural movement can be detrimental because it only takes six inches of water to move your feet from under you. If you're in the water when the tide is at its peak, you will be pushed or nudged back to the shore. Conversely, at low tide, the ocean is generally calm as the waves come in quietly, softly, still, majestically. There you're just, it's like you're just lulled into a moment of quiet reflection, almost hypnotized. This year, 2020, has been the year of high tides. The waves have been crashing at our shoreline for the whole year. We have been pushed into shelters. We have found new life in visitations 
through our computer screens as we zoom continually. For way too many, the waves have overtaken them, creating major loss of life due to pandemic-related illnesses. For others, the waves have crashed at the shoreline of social equity, social equality in a country that so long has been determined to only respond during low tide. We wait. We wait. We wait for return to whatever is normal. God is extending an invitation for us to respond to those things which we can change. Those things over which we do have some control. We may not know when we can fully return in, to in-person worship to our workplaces, to other uh, venues that we frequent. But what we can do is attend to one another. We can attend to urgent matters that are screaming for our attention. Our whole world is searching for a roadmap. Our country especially is searching for a roadmap leading to becoming the, the path to, to normality again. That vision where all people may experience dignity and abundant life and see themselves and others as beloved children of God. Trouble is, there is no easy path. There is no easy path and and a great deal of talking, discernment, and action are required to get to that uh, place that we probably would refer to as the promised land. There are times when conversations are so difficult to have. People struggle in the most intimate interpersonal relationships to say when they have been hurt or how they have been offended. Sometimes people just walk away without ever expressing their true feelings and, and then pain just begins to fester. We need to communicate. We need to talk. We need to have conversations. When the conversation doesn't yield the desired results the very first time, then the tendency is just shrug it off and give up. Here comes the challenge. The challenge is that when those conversations are avoided, it becomes toxic. It can leave behind a toxic culture that permeates the whole community. And that's needless. We can talk things out. We can work together. We never know which incident is going to trigger something. We never know when the waves are going to come crashing upon our shoreline. Matthew's gospel challenges us. It challenges us to become involved in tough conversations. We're called to bravely stand up for what is right. And we're called to bravely stand up against what is wrong. We are called to raise our voices. And if needed, the roadmap provides strategies wherever conflicts develop. Now this particular passage that we just read is thought to be a conversation that was created by the apostle. It's highly unlikely that Jesus said these exact words because Jesus never spoke about the church or resolving conflicts in the church. Our text from Matthew applies to conflicts that required attention. These things came after Jesus' death and resurrection. The message, however, is central to an understanding of how to stay in conversation at our most challenging times. Something that is hard for us to do. 
Now, we're the United Methodist Church. We came back together. We had tough conversations. Many con congregations within the United Methodist Church have uh, continued to struggle. To struggle to design programs that will lead to the world the message of Jesus Christ that Jesus preached about throughout his ministry. It's an overwhelming task. Were it easy, were it easy, the work would have been completed many years ago. But it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of sheer will and intentionality. It also requires a willingness to both talk and listen. And neither practice is easy. It's impossible to get closer to the goal if we don't make every possible attempt. So here we are in 2020 amidst a national global pandemic. We need to summon up the courage to address the issues going on in our world. We need to look at the root causes. We need to find solutions that reorder how we live together harmoniously in a loving community. In a loving community that celebrates the depth and breadth of communion, beautiful communion. The church and its leaders are, are just poised to spearhead this mission. It's what we've trained for all our lives. We're actually at a remarkable place. It's a remarkable moment in what we call ordinary time of the church to model to secular society what brave conversations we can lead in our churches and they can see the healing taking place. Jesus understood that healing. Jesus truly understood that healing, and, and Jesus understood that it involves taking some risks. Every time he dined with tax collectors, every time he dined with Gentiles, people were enraged. They were mad. They thought it was inappropriate for Jesus to fraternize with those people. They thought Jesus continued to preach about uh, love for one another, but it didn't include those people. United Methodist Church is a church that celebrates diversity for hundreds of years. Thanks be to God for that. In, uh, in many of the segregated churches, there were endless conversations about what inclusion would look like if all church doors were open to everyone. While most doors are now open, it still eludes us in so many places. This is a year of change. A year of change when many of the old societal norms are being challenged. The church is also tasked with confronting its own struggles. while at the same time the church is trying to give us a somewhat place of normalcy. There are so many people that feel the church has wronged them. Matthew recommends that such a person be called out, first privately, then in increasingly public formats, We are at the inflection point where this work is urgent. This work has to be done. It can be done even at a time when in-person gatherings are conducted at a minimum. We can challenge ourselves to creatively determine how to facilitate dialogues with other congregations. Within our context, 
across denominations. It helps to tell the truth. It helps to tell the truth and to realize that every human being is entitled to their opinion. Truth telling creates vulnerability. Sometimes leads to confrontations. But hopefully, where we act with love, we open a dialogue, a new dialogue. As Christians, we cannot give up. So if we're ever going to arrive at low tide, where we love our neighbors as ourselves, as Jesus told us to do, we must all be willing to risk pain. We must all be willing to risk suffering. In an earlier chapter in Matthew, Jesus tells Peter, Come on, Peter. Step out in faith into the rough seas. Come to me. Although the waves are crashing, Jesus beckoned Peter. Jesus Christ beckons you and me today. His contemporary disciples to step out in faith to eradicate inequity and spread the very clear and concise message of love. Love for all people. The goal of becoming the church is not relegated to one or a handful of congregations. There must be a focused and concerted effort for everyone to engage. We all know the past can't be undone. It can't. But the goal of studying and revisiting history is a help to all of us. It helps us to understand the mistakes we made so that we don't make them again because everything is cyclical. Too often, Dialogues lead to superficial work that is ultimately unsatisfying. Jesus is inviting us as Christians to dismantle the wrongs once and for all so that the afflicted may be healed forever. So the prayer for us today is this. May God nudge us all to the shoreline where we can find the energy to listen to each other and develop a plan that leads to lasting change. Jesus Christ calls us today to surrender our lives to Almighty God and be used as tools of transformation to change this world. Amen. Let us pray. May the Lord bring you into ever deeper understanding of the love of God and of the patience that comes from Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.